Thank you, Catherine. Good morning. Welcome to Cleveland Park Congregational United Church of Christ. We are an open and affirming congregation committed to racial justice. And whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. We'd like to um, say a special welcome to any visitors with us today. We're glad that you're here. And if you would like us to keep in touch with you, please sign our guest book um, that you saw on your way in. And also, we invite you to join us for coffee hour for some refreshments and conversation after the service. Well, today is one of those days when we have a lot going on. Our church council will be having its bi-monthly meeting at 12 o'clock today. And then um, at 4 o'clock, the poetry group will be meeting. And then at 5.30, the faith life group will be meeting. And I think that's probably quite enough <laughs> for one day. Also, I just want to point out that the Christians for Ceasefire are continuing um, their actions and they're going to be holding a prayer vigil this week and you can find out more information about that and all the other things happening today and next week in your bulletin. And with that, I'll turn things back over to Pastor Ellen with just a reminder to make sure that your electronic devices are muted. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. And I'll just piggyback on that um, technological uh, suggestion uh, by saying that, or acknowledging, I should say, that we do, um, for our scripture reading and sermon, offer close captioning on the screen. Um, I know that that can be a little distracting for some, and for others, it is um, very important to their being able to take in all that's being said. So um, if you don't like the closed captioning, I'm just going to encourage you to look over here. And those of you who rely on it, we're glad we have it for you. So welcome everyone on this, goodness, fifth Sunday of Lent. Just one more to go. It's also St. Patrick's Day. So for all who celebrate, happy St. Patrick's Day. This morning, we're going to continue our Lenten worship theme, The Body Remembers, with a focus on what our bodies, minds, spirits can and cannot do on our own. What do we do that we wish we did not? What do we not do that we wish we did? And how can a power greater than ourselves make a difference? As always, we begin our service by lighting our candles of hope and healing for the world. May this light illumine all places, beings, and situations without exception, near and far. Please join me for our call to worship. Often, we yearn to be in charge. Sometimes we confuse ourselves with God. This morning, we surrender these desires. Together we pray. Holy One, it's hard to let go and painful to accept all we can't control. We're thankful for 12-step programs, which acknowledge both powerlessness and human choice. This morning, we pray the serenity prayer with gratitude for all the lives it has transformed, trusting it will influence our own as well. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. 
Please rise in body and or spirit as you are able for our opening hymn found on page 557. We're centering the need for confession, not because any of us is particularly horrible, but because none of us is perfect. We've each fallen short of loving God, our neighbor, ourselves, and our planet. When we humbly confess, when we truly want to start fresh, when we go home today, and make even one small change in our lives, it matters to the world and our own small selves. This morning, we share the classic confession from the Anglican Book of Common Prayer. Please join me. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Let your souls receive this rest. May the God who understands that we yearn for control while having very little forgive all that we have done and shouldn't have done, as well as all that we have left undone and should have done. May we be compassionately relieved of the need to control those situations over which we have no control. And may we be given the ability to discern what we are meant to do with the courage and desire to do it, 
when it's right for us to act. Amen. Now let us pray. God of magnificent mercy, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I now invite all those online to unmute and those in the sanctuary to turn and share the peace and love of God with your neighbor in the pew. May peace be with you. Mm -hmm. Peace be with you. Peace, everyone. Greetings from warm Montana. <laughs> <laughs> and it is warm. Oh, nice. Yeah, peace be with you. And happy oh, St. Patrick's Day. Peace be with you, Nicholas. <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day. Hey, Nick. Good to see you, buddy. Nick's going to a... Hey, Danielle. Good to see you, too. Hi, Marianne and Mike. <laughs> Hi, Al. Hi. Greetings. Now you're getting a wave, Mom. <laughs> I said, now you're getting a wave from the weavers. <laughs> oh, a wave from oh, right. <laughs> Good to see you all. All right, welcome back, everyone. And if those online could remute. And I'd like to invite all of our children and youth forward. Marion is going to lead our time for all ages. Good morning. All right. Good morning, guys. How are you? Sleepy? Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about the things we can control in our lives and the things that we cannot and what we can kind of do about that. Um, so my question for you is, what is something in your life that you don't have any control over? I don't have control over my feelings. I don't have control of my parents. <laughs> she said she doesn't have control over her parents. Oh. <laughs> when, I 
don't have control on how long the weekends are. Over how long the weekends are, which is too short. <laughs> and you guys are all siblings, so you don't have control over how your sibling acts. Um, that's something I relate to because I moved to DC to move in with my twin sister and live near my other sister, so I can't control how they act, um, much like when I was a child. So it's something you have to work with your whole life. <laughs> but what we can control in these situations is how we react to our feelings or our parents or the weekend. Um, and we can choose to wake up in the morning and go to school even though we don't want to. So that's, that's what I got. Um. <laughs> I have a question. Um, Daphne, when you have a feeling that you can't control, what do you do? I either go crazy or calm down and distract myself. Okay, so I'm curious how you calm down and distract yourself because I think a lot of the grown-ups also when they have big feelings, you know, that's something that they struggle with. So do you have ways that you calm down and distract yourself? Um, I talk with the nearest adult and if I have something that, like if, uh, like at school, if uh, like I got into a fight with one of my friends and I had lots of feelings at the same time, I would probably talk to my teacher about it and read a book on my desk. Okay, so talk to trusted adults and sometimes maybe do a little reading because that can calm you down. Charles, I'm worried, I'm not worried, I'm wondering, maybe I'm worried, that was, I'm wondering when you're feeling like, oh my gosh, the weekends aren't long enough and you have no control over them, what do you do? Um, I don't do anything. I just say Saturdays are depressing in my um, head because like then you know there's Sunday next and after Sunday there's Monday. So Saturday is kind of your favorite day? Yeah. Yeah, because you know that you've got another day coming. Yeah, but Sundays are kind of depressing at the end of them because then you know you have school the next day. I see, yeah. Yeah, so then you just have to kind of let it go and shake it off. All right, well, do you, Marian, would you be willing to lead us in a little prayer about that? Yes. Um, dear God, Help us to take care of ourselves so that we can help others and go throughout our days. Um, amen. Amen. All right. Enjoy your time downstairs. And um, I'm seeing you guys all have green on, so you're not going to get any pinches today. I have no green on. <laughs> okay, fine. Don't pinch me. <laughs> All right, Carolyn is going to read from Paul's letter to the Romans. Romans chapter seven, verses 14 through 20. For we all know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold into slavery under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but the very thing that I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that good does not dwell within me, that is not in my flesh. For the desire to do good lies close at hand, but not the ability. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, 
It is no longer I who do it, but the sin with the, that dwells within me. Thank you, Carolyn. This is one of those passages from which I'm tempted to cherry pick one line. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. I mean, we can all relate to that, and we wouldn't have to deal with the sin and evil language of the other verses. But that's not what I'm going to do. Let's try this instead. Here's a rewriting of the passage in words that may be a bit more relatable, hence useful to many. My intent isn't to reduce the impact or power of Paul's words, but to give us a better chance of hearing them. We know right from wrong. We know what right living looks like, and yet so often we do the opposite. Why? Even though we know right from wrong, there's this part of us that leans toward wrongdoing, a part that doesn't desire the good part that makes us do the opposite of what we want. A part that makes us do the opposite of what we want, what Paul calls the sin that dwells within. We may use different words, but we know what he means. There's this part of us we can't control. We want to, and yes, sometimes we can, but so often, we can't. Meanness, greed, binge eating, apathy, cynicism, judgmentalism, overuse of alcohol, arrogance, scorn, misuse of pills, rage, jealousy, disrespect. We each know our demons. And we each know how often we decide never again and again happens anyway. I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. And when this happens, too often we end up hating ourselves. The truth is, we humans get it wrong as often as we get it right. Sin is just shorthand for this undesirable tendency. As author and theologian Barbara Brown Taylor observes, abandoning the language of sin will not make sin go away. And Debbie Thomas writes, embracing Paul's vulnerable take on sin gives us a viable place to begin a freeing place to stand. It tells us the truth, which is that we are both beautiful and broken, made in God's divine image, but enslaved to something that actively wars against our efforts to be good and do good. We wish we could be in control, to always do that which we want to do, but we're not, and we don't. And this is why I think the 12 steps, no matter who we are and what we struggle with, can be helpful to all. Listen to the first three. We admitted we were powerless over fill in your own blank and that our lives had become unmanageable. Two, we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity or serenity. Three, we made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood God. In sum, one, I can't. Two, God can. Three, I'm going to let him. 
The point being, we aren't God, or tautologically, we aren't a power greater than ourselves. Keeping this in mind, I share Father James Martin's rendition of the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the people I cannot change, which is pretty much everyone, since I'm clearly not you, God, at least not the last time I checked. And while you're at it, God, please give me the courage to change what I need to change about myself, which is frankly a lot since once again, I'm not you, which means I'm not perfect. It's better for me to focus on changing myself than to worry about changing other people who, as you'll no doubt remember me saying, I can't change anyway. Finally, grant me the wisdom to just shut up whenever I think I'm clearly smarter than anyone else in the room that no one knows what they're talking about except me or that I alone have all the answers. Basically, God, grant me the wisdom to remember that I'm not you. Amen. I'm not God. I'm not my own higher power. And those two are pretty easy for me to remember. What's harder for me to admit and acknowledge is that I'm not anyone else's higher power either. I don't actually know what's right for other people, what path is theirs, what they should be doing with their lives. Which isn't to say I don't have an opinion, but as my high school friend's colonel father used to say, forgive me in advance, opinions are like rectums, he used another word, everyone has them. The truth is, I don't know what you should be doing, and it's not my job to tell you. What is my job, in my case, literally, is to point you in the direction of your higher power, God, source, Jesus, grace, whatever word you choose to refer to a power greater than yourself, and invite you to let go and let that power work through you or as one of the 12 steps mottos summarizes, let go and let God. Now I know for some people this sounds like I'm asking you to shirk responsibility, that I'm saying you should just sit back and let life happen, taking no action to address the injustices, the wrongs, the yes, evils of this world. But that's not what I'm saying, not at all. Listen again to the words of the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things I can. And the wisdom to know the difference. We're not asked to do nothing. We are asked to discern what is ours to do. And friends, this almost always begins with the first step, admitting we're powerless. But how can powerlessness and change or acting to change things go hand in hand? Well, this for me is what faith is. This is where we say, I don't know. I can't control, and I don't do the thing I want to do, but the thing that I don't want to do, yet there's a power greater than myself that does know, that can show me the way, that can help me do the thing I want to do and let go of that which I don't want to do. We live in a world not of our making, not in our control and beyond our ability to understand. This frightens us. I say this with compassion. It's hard to live in this world as a puny mortal human being, knowing we have so very little say about what's going on. The poet John Rodell describes it this way. Me, hey God, God. Hello, my love, me. The world is completely out of control. 
God. I know, it's such an adventure, right? Me, no, it's like being on a runaway train. I feel like I need to, I need to feel like I'm in control of my life. God, you want to be in control? Me, yes. God, you are living on a spinning wet rock of a planet that resides next to a constantly exploding fireball in the middle of an ever expanding universe that is filled with mysteries beyond your wildest imagination. Me, um, okay, God. And on this planet that you are hurtling through the great expanse in, you are coexisting with billions of other people who have free will and their own experiences that shape their perspectives and belief. Me, yeah, God. And while all this is going on, your soul is residing in a physical body that is such a miracle of delicate engineering that at any given moment could produce its last heartbeat. Me. Right. God. What is it about your existence that you think you have any control of? Me. Um, God. Come on, you know the answer to this. What can you control? Me. How kind I am to people? God. Yep, and one other thing. Me. What's that? God. How kind you are to yourself. Aside from that, most of everything else is a bit outside of your design. Me. This is a bit terrifying. God, all great adventures are. And this may or may not be encouraging to you, but I think it's true. Most everything is a bit outside of our design. Even kindness can be hard since we have that very human tendency to do the thing we don't want to do and not do the thing we want to do. So where does this leave us? Well, it seems to me we can respond to our common dilemma in any number of ways. First, the negative. We can cling tightly to an illusion of control try to control others or rigidly control or closely related, go completely out of control ourselves. And when you think about it, these options lie at the root of most human wrongdoing from fascism to substance abuse. Now the positive. We could release our stranglehold on control and acknowledge our powerlessness opening ourselves up to the grace of our higher power and listening for that which is actually ours. There's a strange alchemy between letting go, releasing control, admitting powerlessness, and receiving the power we need to make better choices, do the right thing, and so wonderful, feel a greater sense of freedom, peace and love. Of course, even then, we can't control outcomes, which may be the most difficult release of all. Because even when wisdom gives us the ability to know the difference between what we can and cannot change, even when our higher power lets us know what is ours and when to act, we cannot control the outcome meaning we're going to need to let go again and again. We're going to need to acknowledge our powerlessness again and again. We're going to need to open ourselves to the grace and guidance of God again and again. It's not a one and done. So here we are. Humans on a spinning wet rock of a planet coexisting with billions of other people in physical bodies that are miracles of delicate engineering. 
Welcome to the adventure. Welcome to the ride. May God help us to be kind. Amen. We'll take just a moment for meditation. It is now the time in our service when we share our deep joys and concerns silently or out loud with God and with one another. I'll share some of those we've already received plus any posted in the chat room. I'll then invite those in the sanctuary to share. God, hear our healing prayers for Ann D's dad as he receives treatment for bladder cancer for John as he recovers from surgery, Michael's sister Krista, who's entered hospice care for brain cancer and for her husband Bob and son Nate, and all who are dealing with long-term health concerns and diagnoses. God, hear our prayers for all those celebrating Ramadan, Tim and his family as he enters the final stages of life, Carol's friend Rita, whose husband died last week. An immediate and permanent ceasefire in Gaza and a just peace in Palestine, Israel. All those in Gaza, Israel, Sudan, Ukraine, and elsewhere who are in harm's way. All who are grieving the loss of loved ones. And anyone, anywhere who is sick or grieving or in need. anyone in the sanctuary have a concern to share? Sarah. Um, my uncle Ron entered hospice care this week for brain cancer and leukemia. Thank you, Sarah. Our prayers are with him. My uh, longtime friend, Alex, whose mother passed away night before last. Prayers for Alex and his family. Other concerns? Hi, I'm concerned, shocked, and alarmed by Pope Francis's words of isolationism and appeasement that he voiced earlier this week. Thank you, Alan. And I have a I have a couple of concerns. Um, my mother is in the hospital with a um, fractured vertebrae, so I ask for her healing. Um, and uh, this morning, early this morning, 3 a.m., there was a mass shooting in the Shaw neighborhood. Um, fortunately, nobody from the Shaw Community Center was um, involved or, or hurt, uh, but it happened right outside of the apartment building of many of our families in the Shaw community, and it's just another uh, tragedy in the ongoing, you know, lives of, of that community. So please pray for them. I'm so sorry, Serena. Thank you for sharing that with us. 
Our prayers are with all the victims and their families. Any other concerns? All right, joys. God, we give thanks for the birth of Addison, the granddaughter of Nick's ski team coach and manager, our congregation's March birthdays, and all those who devote their lives to creating peace, joy, and justice in this world. Does anyone else have a joy to share or a gratitude? Sarah. Thank you. i um, like to express deep gratitude for the successful surgery that my mother went through and she's now walking almost completely without pain and says she wish she'd done this earlier, but she's, she's going. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. May she continue healing. One March birthday is my granddaughter Stella, which is why she's not with us today. She's at her birthday bowling party and was 10 on Wednesday and was with her, the other half of her beloved family. Ah, Stella's 10th birthday. Woo. <laughs> other joys. Yes, Alan. I'm still celebrating the opportunity to run into our city council member, Matt Fruman, yesterday outside the Tenley Metro, uh, most of all, for the opportunity to school him at length on the history of the occupied territories and our treaty obligations under the Geneva Convention. It's been 57 years since the land was taken in war. And although we're willing to stand up to Russia, apparently we're not willing to stand up to our ally. Thank you, Alan. Emily. Alan has far more faith in the Geneva Convention than I do. Not that it's ever been followed by anybody but us. But I'm here to thank God for Jose Andres and the World Central Kitchen for cutting through all the BS and getting the job done. Thank you, Emily. John. Hi. I uh, want to thank you all for thinking of me as I recover from my surgery. As you can see, I'm up and walking around. It's a bit of a roller coaster ahead, no doubt, but I um, wanted to say that after getting home from a doctor appointment recently, I stopped at a music committee meeting and then I uh, got home and found in the mail I had received a uh, a literary journal that has one of my short stories in it. Woo! So that was very exciting to see my words in print. Any other joys? Let us pray. Loving God, listen to the prayers of your people. Comfort and nourish us in both our joys and our concerns, spoken or unspoken, and hold us tenderly as we face the many different experiences that life and being human can bring. Holy and gracious Spirit, we are grateful for your presence as we move into this new week, a time that will bring forth its own sorrows and joys. Remind us to hold one another in love and prayer, reaching out as we are able to lend a hand, offer support, or share in celebration. We give thanks for the blessing of this congregation in our lives and pray that we might be a blessing to others in return. In your compassionate name, amen. I now invite you to hold all of these joys and concerns in your heart as Catherine offers us, Be Thou My Vision.
Oh, Catherine, that was gorgeous. Thank you so much. This is the time in our service when we receive the offering in grateful appreciation for the life and work of this beloved community. To support the ongoing work of our church, I ask that you please give in person, via mail or online as you are able. If you're in the sanctuary, you can contribute as the offering plate is passed or take out your phone and scan the QR code on the back of your worship bulletin. This will take you to the donate page. If you've already donated, I invite you to take one of the offering cards in the pew racks and put it in the plate as a symbol of your giving. We now also have a um, QR code sign at the back of the church because someone thought that might be easier. For those on Zoom, the link to our donate page is in the chat room. Thank you for all your gifts of time, money, energy, and spirit. standing in body and or spirit as you are able for our closing hymn, Commission and Sung Benediction.
for our commission and per request. Thank you, Carol. I am going to share with you the long version of the Serenity Prayer, which is still not that long, but it's the long version of the Serenity Prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, Accepting hardships as the pathway to peace. Taking, as Jesus did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. Trusting that God will make things right if I surrender to her will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with the divine forever and ever in the next. Amen. Please join in our sung benediction.